So last time we left off by getting our projectiles to actually work, but we couldn't actually kill the enemy and the enemy couldn't actually kill us. So what I'm going to be showing you this time is this here where if an enemy actually touches the player, that player will actually die and if a player shoots an enemy, that enemy will actually be destroyed. So without further ado, let's get started. So before we actually do anything, there is a slight issue that I want to address and actually fix. So let me actually show you what that issue is here. So if I go ahead and run my projects here and I actually join the game and I click on ready and I wait for an enemy to spawn and I shoot that enemy, you will notice that the bullets actually get destroyed before they even hit the enemy. And I don't know what happened on the left screen, but we're gonna try and fix these issues here. But before we do, only a few of you are actually subscribed to the channel, so make sure you hit that subscribe button as it definitely helps the channel out. So now, actually, let's actually get started. So let's go and go into the player bullet scene. And inside the player bullet scene, we wanna actually go into the script. And we wanna go into the area entered function. And inside this function, we want to go ahead and add an if statement. So in this case, it's going to be if hurtbox in area dot name. And if this is true, then we want to do the Q3. And basically checking if the area that entered our bullet area is actually the hurtbox on the enemy. And if so, we are doing the Q3. So if we actually go ahead and run our projects to test this out, and we wait for an enemy, an enemy to spawn in and we shoot the enemy, you will notice that the bullet actually is getting destroyed. So everything seems to actually be working. Now, before I actually go into my enemy scene, I want to actually go ahead and add my player bullet to a group. So go over to node groups and add it to a group called bullet. Now with that done, we can actually go to our enemy scene. So go ahead and open your enemy scene here. And what we want to actually do here is we want to do several things. So we're going to actually connect some signals and we're going to add some uh, code to those uh, signals for the hitbox and hurtbox. So we're actually going to start by connecting the signal to the hurtbox in this case. So we're going to go over to node signals and it's going to be an area entered signal. And we're going to connect it to the enemy and inside the enemy script we should have an area entered function now so and that's inside that function what we want to do is we want to do if area dot is in group and this is where the bullet group is going to come into play so if area is in group bullet then we want to just simply do a q3 now we actually want to do this for the server as well because we're the way we're spawning the enemies in is we're actually spawning them on the client project as well as the server project so in order to q3 them on the the server we're gonna do an RPC ID to the server and we're gonna call the destroy enemy function that we're gonna make on the server we're actually gonna call this RPC ID function above the Q3 So originally I was going to actually add an area 2D to my player to act as the hurtbox for the player and actually use that to kill the player but I'm going to actually just make use of the enemy hitbox so I'm going to go ahead and add a body entered signal for the hitbox and connect it to the enemy and inside that function what we want to go ahead and do is I want to do an if statement so in this case it's going to be if body dot is in group and we're going to be checking for the player group. Then inside the if statement, we're going to do body and then we're going to be calling the damage function. So body.damage and the damage function is the function we're going to actually write on the player. So go ahead and open your player scene and go into the player script and we're going to go ahead and write that damage function here. So we want to go ahead and do function damage. And inside this function, what we're going to do is we're going to do an RPC to the server. So RPC ID 1, and then we're going to be calling the die function on the server. The die function on the server, in turn, is then going to call this function here that we're going to be adding on the clients. So it's going to be called sync function player died. And inside this function, what we want to go ahead and do is we want to do set physics process to false. Then uh, if I actually go up here, we want to make sure that we actually have this line of code. So on ready var collision is equal to the collision polygon 2D. Then we want to do collision.disabled is equal to true. Then 
Uh, the way I'm actually doing this is I'm not actually Q-freeing the player, but I'm instead just hiding the player. So just call the hide function. And we actually want to hide the player label as well. So player label dot hide. And the reason we want to do this is because we actually set the player level as top level in this line here, which uh, when I actually tested the player label watch it wasn't actually getting hidden. So we're actually manually hiding the player level, the player label here. Now, what I want to actually do is on the server, I want is I want to go ahead and write those functions that I'm calling from the client. So remote function destroy enemy, and inside this function, I'm simply just doing Q free, and that should actually destroy the enemies on the server side. What I want to actually do is I want to go ahead and write the remote functions for the player. So let's go over to my player script, and inside this script. We are going to call the remote function die, which we're calling from the client. And we're just going to simply do an RPC to the clients. And we're calling the player died function on all the clients. And now if I actually run everything to test everything out, as you will see here, and I join the game and I wait for enemies to spawn in and I shoot that enemy, the enemy does in fact get destroyed, as you see here. Now I'm actually going to let this enemy here touch the player down below here, and it should actually destroy that player, and it didn't actually seem to work, so there's a slight issue, and I think the issue might be with the enemy collisions. So let me actually check the enemy collisions here real fast. So. Uh, let me just check here and I'm actually going to go ahead and make each collision unique. So I'm going to go into the hitbox collision shape. I'm going to click the drop down and click make unique. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the hurt box. So drop down, make unique. And now I can actually resize the collision shapes independently. So I'm going to resize the uh, main collision shape and make it smaller than the rest of them. Then I'm going to select the hitbox collision shape and I'm going to make it a little bit smaller, but I'm going to make sure it's bigger than the uh, main collision shape and then I'm going to select the hurt box collision shape and I'm going to make that one the biggest out of the three. Now if I actually test everything out and I wait for enemies to spawn back in and I shoot those enemies, it's, it's actually destroying the enemies, which is good. But uh, the bullets uh, didn't seem to actually be working properly. But if the enemy touches the player, that actually seems to be working. So let's try and fix the whole bullet issue here. So let me actually go to the player bullet script and I'm going to write this line here. So print area was entered and I'm going to do the exact same thing on the body entered function. So in this case, it's going to be print body was entered and I'm adding these lines to just basically for debugging purposes. And I think I actually noticed the issue here and that's because I misspelled hurt box. It should actually be a capital B instead of a lowercase b because you want to make sure that it has the exact same name as the hurt box on the enemy, otherwise it won't actually work. So while we're at it, we might as well go into the player script and delete the print input vector line since we no longer need it. And if I go ahead and test my projects out and I click on ready to actually join the world and I wait for the enemies to spawn in and I actually shoot the enemies, the bullets will actually just be destroyed when they touch the enemy and the enemy will also get destroyed. If an enemy touches the player, the player actually does die. But you will notice that there is a slight issue where uh, the enemy can uh, st uh, still actually target the dead player. And uh, this is actually an issue because if we actually had more enemies spawning in, they would actually still be able to target the dead player. So let's actually go ahead and write some code here to actually fix that issue. So to do this, we're going to actually go ahead and we're going to go into our enemy script. Then inside the hitbox body entered function, what we're going to do is we're going to add another if statement. So in this case, we're going to do if players dot get children dot size and then is greater than one. If this is the case, we're going to do an RPC ID to the server and we're going to be calling the remove player function. And then we're passing the body dot name to it. 
and we're doing players that remove child and we're removing the body now this is probably not the best way of doing this but it's something that i tested and it worked so uh keep that in mind so now uh, basically we're removing the player from the player's node on the world and that's how we're actually making it so that the new enemies that spawn in can actually target the old players that died so we're doing an rpc id to the server and we're doing the select target function again actually select a new target then on the actual server what we want to do is we want to go ahead and add that function so remote function remove player and we're passing uh, the player name to it and then inside this function and actually let's just call it player instead of player name and inside this function we're going to do basically the same thing so players dot remove child players dot get underscore node and then player and it's player not player name since i actually went ahead and renamed it so make sure that it's just player and there is another thing i want to do and that is i want to go into my game state script and i want to go ahead and delete the max enemies variable and the if statement inside the remote function spawn enemies and i just fixed the indentation there so we don't get any errors and basically what i did there is i made it so the enemies actually keep on spawning and not only just five spawn in now over on the client side in the game state script where i'm calling the spawn enemies function with an rpc id to the server i want to pass the possible destinations that size to it now on the server inside the game state script i'm actually making use of the variable we're passing on the client so in this case i called it pause and instead of doing randi mod 4 we're going to do randi mod pause and basically what we just did there is we made it so that we can actually add as many spawn points for the enemies as we want without having to actually manually go into the script and adjust the value so it just does it automatically now and as you see here if an enemy uh, destroys a player and uh, the enemies that were originally targeting that player back when it was alive still target that player but all the enemies that are spawning in um, are actually targeting a player that's actually alive so everything does actually seem to be working now there are a couple glitches that i should mention and that is if two enemies spawn at the exact same location at the exact same time there are some glitches that can happen with the enemies and also as you will see here the enemies can sometimes become unsynced and that's because i'm not actually synchronizing the position of the enemies across the network and this isn't actually normally an issue if the players are actually alive and it all just depends on how you coded your enemies for example if you're doing all your uh logic for the enemies on the client there's no need for you to actually synchronize the position of your enemies so if you do want to actually go ahead and then synchronize the position of the enemies you can go ahead and do it it basically works the same way as we're synchronizing the movement for our players but anyway with that you're basically done now all we have left to do is actually go ahead and add a end screen so a lose screen and a win screen for our game and that pretty much does it for this so yeah the links to the github project will be in the description and if you like the video make sure you leave a like and definitely consider subscribing as it definitely helps out the channel and anyway as always i'll see you guys in the next one